Here are 12 signs that can tell you whether you might have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. SIBO is a common condition with huge implications for health long term. It's a situation where unhealthy bacterial species like E. coli, Campylobacter, Pseudomonas, Salmonella have proliferated, essentially outmuscling healthy probiotic species like Lactobacillus and Bifidobacteria. And not only have they proliferated, they've also ascended up the ileum, jejunum, duodenum, and stomach. So there's 30 feet now of unhealthy bacterial and fungal, by the way, species that live and die very rapidly. When these organisms die, they release their end products. Now, some of these end products gain entry into the bloodstream because part of SIBO is an increase in intestinal permeability. So these bacterial and fungal byproducts enter the bloodstream. That is a process called endotoxemia. But that process, that, that is a very important insight because endotoxemia explains how 30 feet of bacteria and fungi can be expressed as a skin condition like rosacea or restless leg syndrome or the aches and pains of fibromyalgia. In other words, an intestinal process can export its effects to other parts of the body. So very important for uh, so many health conditions. So what are the signs that suggest you that you might have SIBO? Food intolerances. If you have any intolerance to any food, like uh, legumes, white beans, black beans, chickpeas, uh, to nightshades, like tomatoes or eggplant, or to histamine-provoking foods, or to nuts or eggs, any food intolerance, think SIBO, because that increased intestinal permeability, that's part of SIBO, sets you up for food intolerance. It's not enough to just avoid that food that causes some reaction. You want to look for the cause of having developed that food intolerance, and the cause is almost always SIBO. Related to the first cause, food intolerances, are new food intolerances. Let's say you eat, you've eaten eggs all your life, no problem, then all of a sudden you develop skin rash, abdominal pain, headaches, asthma attack from eating eggs. That new food intolerance tells you you've likely got SIBO. Uh, lactose intolerance. If you've been able to consume dairy products most of your life and all of a sudden you become uh, lactose intolerant, 90% chance you've got SIBO. So any new food intolerance is highly suggestive of SIBO. If you've been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, it's highly likely you've got SIBO. In fact, some of the gastroenterology community is uh, uh, debating whether they should do away with the IBS label and just call it what it is, SIBO. So if you've got bowel urgency uh, and you're running to the toilet unexpectedly and you have irritable bowel syndrome, think SIBO. If you have fibromyalgia, the aches and pains of fibromyalgia, there's a very high, maybe as high as 100% likelihood of SIBO, and you have it really bad. Part of getting relief from fibromyalgia is doing my programs and ridding your life of wheat and grains, supplementing vitamin D. Those two steps provide partial relief and sometimes total relief, but there's also an important group of people who respond vigorously to reversal of SIBO when they have fibromyalgia. If you have skin rashes and your dermatologist, your doctor has prescribed steroid creams and other things and you have re persistent or recurrent eczema or rosacea or psoriasis, think SIBO as the cause. If you've taken stomach acid blocking drugs like ranitidine or Prilosec or Protonix or Asifex, there's a very high likelihood you've got SIBO because stomach acid is a barrier to both bacteria coming in orally or coming up from the colon. So lack of stomach acid is a huge risk factor for SIBO. If you've taken non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen for menstrual cramps or naproxen for joint pain or something like that, that also sets you up for SIBO and there's a high likelihood you've developed uh, bacterial overgrowth. If you've taken antibiotics, even long ago, that sets you up uh, for both SIBO as well as fungal overgrowth. Uh, because it disrupts bacterial populations and can encourage over-proliferation of unhealthy species. If you've got restless leg syndrome, which is a peculiar condition where you can't sleep at night because your legs have this feeling of always having to move, that, is, uh, uh, that condition comes with a very high likelihood that you have SIBO. If you are overweight or obese, there's at least a 50% chance you've got SIBO, so a very high likelihood. 
if you have type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes. Likewise, about a 50% or greater chance you've got SIBO. If you have any form of neurodegenerative condition, like Parkinsonism, a tremor, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, think SIBO and CIFO, by the way, fungal overgrowth as well, very high likelihood. Now, what if you have, have one of these signs, like a food intolerance or irritable bowel syndrome or fibromyalgia, that puts, uh, uh, puts you at high likelihood of having SIBO, but you don't want to bother with it or you're scared by it. A very unwise thing to do because the consequences of uncorrected SIBO are huge. Because if you have this, this trillions of bacteria and fungi proliferating, living and dying and releasing their byproducts, this sets you up long term for other conditions, autoimmune conditions, neurodegenerative conditions like Parkinsonism and Lou Gehrig's disease and Alzheimer's dementia, diverticular disease and diverticulitis, colon cancer, metabolic disorders, fatty liver, type 2 diabetes. In other words, SIBO drives so many health conditions. So if you've got any of these signs, take them seriously and explore this question of SIBO. Now exactly how to do that is a little bit more complicated and that's why I urge you to participate in some of my conversations. So see my videos about this. Uh, see my Wheat Belly blog and my Undoctored blog where I have many conversations, many discussions about SIBO and accompanying CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth. I encourage you to get the Air device, see how to use that in my Wheat Belly blog. That's a consumer device you use on your own at home that identifies whether or not you have SIBO with confidence. And then if you do have it, then embark on a program to eradicate it. Now, if, if you get to that point, this is more complicated, requires some guidance. You can do this, by the way, without your doctor, because your doctor likely has no idea what SIBO is. And so uh, I, that's what we do in my undoctored inner circle. We show you how to identify it, how to confirm it, how to eradicate it, how to tip the scales in favor of not suffering recurrences. We do that in the undoctored inner circle.